So once again, welcome to our Produce Spotlight series. Today, we are going to be focusing all on rosemary. And I know it might seem odd to be talking about an herb during a Produce Spotlight series, but we do um, lump herbs into, uh, into produce. They are found in the produce section. Um, and so we do like to throw them into our fruits and veggie um, mix from time to time. And this is a perfect time of year to talk about rosemary in particular. And we'll get into why here in a moment. First, though, I love to go through some fun facts about different things. And rosemary, I think, is, is a great one to do that with. Uh, so it, the word rosemary actually has a Latin origin, meaning dew of the sea. And it says that it potentially got that name because of its sea blue colored flowers, which before digging into rosemary for this presentation, I actually did not know that rosemary flowers, it makes sense, most herbs do, right? but I had no idea that they were these beautiful sea blue colored flowers as you see here in this picture. They are predominantly that color, but you can also find them in more shades of purple and pink as well. In terms of when it flowers, it usually flowers in the summertime. So it is suggested to harvest it prior to that for maximum flavor. And uh, rosemary is a perennial, meaning that it can live more than two years, but some species, depending on the climate, can actually live for 30 years. I see there in chat that that's a long time. It definitely is um, for one particular type of plant. So really cool um, note about rosemary there. And that's primarily because it's a very, very hardy herb. Um, so, but pretty, pretty neat, I think, too. What else about rosemary? Uh, it does have some symbolic meaning. So the Greeks used to feel that rosemary would help strengthen brain and memory. So because of that, they actually wore garlands of rosemary when they were studying for examinations and things of that nature to help them get through. In terms of flowers and flower definitions and meetings, um, rosemary actually means love and remembrance. So in ancient times, they did often use rosemary when it came to commemorating wars or funerals. Um, but then also just momentous occasions as well as a way to remember it. They said that rosemary signifies remembrance as well as love. And that's why um, beyond what it looks like, you know, it looks fairly Christmassy because of that meaning of love and remembrance. It's often used this time of year for holiday gifts as a way to promote remembering that little gift. So if you were along with me last week, I was able to join Joni for her table talk session. And we talked all about do-it-yourself gifts and ways to add um, little special touches to them. So rosemary could be a fun little thing that you sneak into those gifts as well. If you did miss that session, it is on our YouTube channel. So feel free to check that out. But I think it's a cute little thing to tuck into packages and tags as this picture shows here. Culinary uses, um, it's primarily used in Italy and France. So for example, different spice blends and rubs, um, specifically in France, Herbs de Provence um, is going to use a lot of rosemary in that blend. It does have a very strong flavor though, so it is recommended to use it sparingly because a little will go a long way. And to definitely, when you are pulling the needles off of a rosemary sprig, to chop them up finely if you are incorporating them into a dish. Those beautiful blue flowers that we saw a moment ago are actually edible and can make for a beautiful garnish in a salad. Other culinary uses, uh, 
Rosemary pairs beautifully with lamb, also chicken. I didn't throw that one on there, but I should have. But iconically, it goes great with lamb. And it is also traditionally used to top off the kasha bread. And it also can be used to infuse olive oils, which I have actually done before. Um, back when we did classes in person, um, I made an olive oil uh, infused with rosemary actually in the slow cooker. Um, just putting olive oil in the slow cooker, putting a couple sprigs of rosemary in there with it and letting it sit for several hours. And then you can bottle it up, even put the rosemary in with it if you want. Um, could also make for another really nice gift. Also goes great on roasted vegetables. So we all chat on our classes about roasting veggies often. Rosemary can be one that's chopped up finely and placed on top of those as well. And then lastly, one that I really like and is pictured here would be to use rosemary as skewers. We actually in our stores, uh, probably more so during the holiday times, um, whether it be now or in the spring for Easter, we do carry the rosemary skewers. They're closer to the bottom where you would get like the fresh bunches of cilantro and parsley, things like that. You will find rosemary skewers and they're labeled as such. And they're going to work a little bit better than the rosemary that you would get in the plastic container packs at the top of the herb section. Um, they make for great skewers because they are so hardy and um, have that like wood like time to them running through. Um, so definitely something fun and unique to try if you haven't already. I will admit that I have not tried it myself yet. I've seen and heard of it before, but um, have not given it a go myself. So if anybody has or um, might plan to after this, certainly um, share because I would love to know how that goes. In the way of health benefits, uh, rosemary does have a decent source of both iron and calcium, as well as some vitamins, including vitamin A, C, and B6. Because of those vitamin properties, we're also getting some antioxidants, which can be potentially helpful for cancer prevention, as well as anti-inflammatory compounds as well. Digging into that a little further, there is a lot of ongoing research about rosemary being a cognitive stimulant. So like I mentioned in the beginning, we talked about how um, uh, the Greeks would wear them whenever studying and things of that nature. There is some research to show that rosemary could actually help stimulate the brain a bit as well as memory function. Next one on here, mood. It is said that the aroma of rosemary can really help clear stress um, and, and just set a better tone and mood of positivity for the day. So I think that that's something that could be fun uh, this time of year too. If you do decide to decorate with rosemary and making rosemary garlands and having that hanging just goes along with that holiday spirit and helping to reduce stress and anxiety to have that aroma fill your air. Um, I see that you mentioned in chat here later this week when I make um, the wreath board that I demonstrated and thinking about using rosemary as the base. Yes, so um, that was another, uh, another class. I think that was last week that I made a charcuterie board in the shape of a wreath. And I did plug in some rosemary here and there to give it some greenery, but actually using it as a full on base to the board, I think would be lovely as well and really make it look full and beautiful. If you weren't able to join for that class, that is another one that is on our YouTube channel um, to teach you how to make the charcuterie board um, look like a wreath. Hair growth, it is thought thought that the oil from rosemary could potentially help with hair growth and texture and prevent baldness. Uh, rosemary is also being researched for its aid in digestion, as well as helping to prevent bacterial infections, particularly staph infection. All ongoing though, um, in terms of research with, with those. 
So what I was going to show to you guys today um, had my camera been working is how to make sugared rosemary, but it is okay. You don't need me to show you how to make it because it is so incredibly simple, okay? And we're gonna look at some examples um, of what it looks like put on um, different things here in a moment. But let me just walk you through the instructions. You need all of three ingredients. You need your rosemary, you need a bowl of water, and you need some sugar. And all you simply do is take your rosemary and dip it in the water, and then dip it in sugar or sprinkle it with sugar and lay it out on parchment paper. Done. It. See, you guys didn't need me for that, right? You didn't need me to show you to do that. Um, and you could do that with cranberries as well. So just dipping the rosemary or cranberries in water, sprinkling with sugar, lay them out on parchment paper to dry for about an hour. You can use them before that, but giving them that hour allows that to settle in and set and harden up a little bit. Um, if you were along with me a couple of weeks ago when I made the cranberry pie, I did sugar some cranberries and put on top of that and it will go lovely with um, sugared rosemary. I see in the chat, you mentioned that the sugared rosemary might look good on the Reese charcuterie board and absolutely, I think that that could be a great touch. The whole point behind doing it is that it gives it a snowy look, right? Um, which is just super fun and neat for this time of year. So let's look at some examples of how to use this. And then um, later today, I will send out pictures of what my vision was for these. I can talk through them then. But this is what has inspired me. These two pictures here of these cakes, you see the sugared rosemary in there, the sugared cranberries, if you were along with Kylene last week, she made dried oranges, which I actually have some dried oranges in, um, well, I have oranges drying in my oven right now to do something similar to this too. Um, and I think that they are just beautiful creations. What my plan is to do is I have vanilla cupcakes right now already made and I'm not going to put any frosting on them. If you guys have seen or heard of bear cakes before, when I mean bear, I mean nothing on them, that type of bear. So a bear cupcake and I'm just going to nestle a little bit of sugared rosemary as well as sugared cranberry and hopefully one of these dried orange slices right in there on the cupcake. So it's a way to present a cupcake in a beautiful manner, um, but without all the extra um, sugar from the icing, right? Because really most folks aren't going to eat the, you know, we're not gonna eat the sugared rosemary or the cranberries, although you could absolutely, but they're more decorations, so to speak. So we're skipping out on all of that frosting while still making our, cupcakes or cakes look beautiful. Now, both of these cakes have some frosting on and they, you know, they look gorgeous um, like that. But if we wanted to skip some of that, um, that's my plan for my cupcakes. So I will send out a picture of that later. Um, the picture on the left here, those um, brown stars, if you're not familiar with them, are star anise or anise. Um, that has like a lecture excuse me, a licorice type flavor. It's usually add to like mulling spices and cider and things of that nature to soak through, but they can make for beautiful little pops on something like this nestled in with the cranberries and rosemary and oranges too. So those are some fun ideas there. Um, let's see what we have up next. I think that this is gorgeous as well. Now this one does have the frosting on there, but how beautiful that like light pink with the accents of the cranberries, the rosemary on top. And you could even go as far as doing that rosemary tree on the side. I just think that this is beautiful. And actually I might make this for Christmas. I was just assigned dessert the other day for Christmas and 
this might be it. Um, I love cake stands. I collect them. <laughs> Anytime I see cake stands anywhere, I'm like, oh, I need that. Um, so this just makes me even happier to see this on this beautiful white um, cake stand. So a lovely cake here. Another idea. Um, I see somebody says it would be beautiful for a winter wedding cake. Absolutely. I think that that would be so awesome. All right. And then a last picture here for an example. Oh, here, wait, we'll go back. Uh, there's a question. How is the rosemary staying up? In this picture here, I am pretty sure that they are pressing that into the frosting. Okay, if you can see on the right, um, you can see kind of where it's even um, like tinged up to the frosting there. So I think that they're putting the stems um, like that wooded, wooded stem that runs through the middle of the rosemary, kind of pressing that in and using the frosting as glue to get that to stay up like that. Um, okay, last set of pictures here. If you don't want to go crazy and bake something, maybe a mocktail or a cocktail is more your speed. Um, I think that these also make for lovely decorations for a holiday drink. You could go um, simple with the one here on the left where you're just using the rosemary. The one on the right is putting those sugared cranberries in there. Oh, I see the comment in chat about dried cranberry root would be cool on the top of the rosemary tree or on the side of the cake. Absolutely, it would just add another dimension and color, I like that idea. But yeah, I like the use of the sugared rosemary and cranberries in these pictures as well. As I mentioned, if you're not feeling like you wanna go full force and baking, maybe these would be more what you're looking to do. Okay, gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen here. Any questions about what we saw today or how to actually make the sugared rosemary? Once again, it is simply just the rosemary dipped in water and then sprinkled with sugar and you're going to lay it out on parchment paper to dry for about an hour. Um, if you want to include those dried oranges like we saw in some of those pictures and you weren't along with Kylene last week, dried oranges are also very easy. I'm not too sure how um, she showed it, but what I would do is simply just slice the orange, place it, place it thinly, place it on parchment paper in the oven for um, about three hours at 200. If you have a dehydrator that would also work really well um, too. So lots of fun things that you can do with the rosemaries, the cranberries and the oranges now that we've talked about all of them in our produce spotlight here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop our recording, but if anyone has any other questions, please feel free to let me know.